Hey y'all, it's Heel Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. My name is George Coles and this is a Heel Heat Top 10. The theme of this Top 10, Top 10 WWE slash WWF theme songs. Now before we get into this, I want to preface it by saying I'm going to be using my phone so the sound quality may not be the greatest but that's what I'm going to play a little snippet off of this from. Um, also, to qualify for this list, I'm only using songs that were made for a wrestler. And also that were made by WWE for the most part. In other words, Ric Flair's, Zach Prosper, whatever the heck it's called, from 2001 to Space Odyssey, not in there. Fly the Valkyries for Daniel Bryan, not in there. CM Punk's Living Color theme, Again, not in there. Paul Hogan's old Eye of the Tiger theme, not in there. As you can see what I'm saying, these are all songs that were specifically made for the wrestler. And I'm going to start off with number 10. A guy who came from ECW had an awesome song in ECW, but with ECW songs, it wasn't licensed. So here it is. And as you can see, that's obviously for Rob Van Dam. I like the song for several different reasons. A, it sets up who's coming out to the ring. It explains who he is. It gives us a nice, heavy rock beat, um, something that we've seen him in ECW with. And it kind of fits him perfectly. It, <clears throat> I can't imagine the song being used for anybody else. And I can't imagine him using any other song in the WWE. So I think, in my opinion, one of the better theme songs are number 10. Now let's go right into our number 9. Probably the newest on our list. In my opinion, how can you go wrong with it? Again, it's atmospheric, it sets a tone, it's very unique, it fits in with the whole presentation of Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. Um, it's something that the crowd can hold their lighters up to. It's something very different, very, very cool. And I know it was made before the Wyatt family, but this is kind of, it was an obscure song that they plucked out and made in his own. And I think it's an awesome song, to be honest with you. One of the, hence why it's on our list here. Now coming off of that, where as we skip around a bit, our number eight song. In my opinion, one of the one of the better songs of the Attitude Era, um, a song that instantly identifiable shows you tells you who's coming. It's 4D Generation X, very memorable, very unique, very much fit the group, uh, very much in the style as a. I've heard it explained before, and I think it's a perfect explanation as a Rage Against the Machine style sound which was very prevalent at the time of the Attitude Era, very big, that rap-rock connection with guys like Korn, Linkin Park, Rage Against the Machine, Limp Bizkit. It fit the era, it fit the group, it fit their attitude, which leads into the Attitude Era, which is a perfect, perfect example of, you know, a song fitting, 
fitting with the person, in my opinion. In this case, a song fitting with the group. Now the next one is our number seven, which is... Mark Henry's theme song. In my opinion, them going outside getting 3-6 Mafia, who was really hot at the time to make Mark Henry a theme song, that not only fit him, fit his character, to me, it's the most... <clears throat> it's the best example of them using a rap song as a theme. John Cena's is very good, it's very unique. This one, to me, fits the Mark Henry character. WWE has been notoriously behind the times when it comes to rap music. Um, Shane got a little bit of a rap song. It fit, but for the most part, their songs were kind of cheesy, like Men on the Mission, um, you know, PG-13, other rap songs they tried to use. And this one, it, at the time it came out, at the time they began using it, it was very hip, very relevant, fits with Mark Henry, it was made specifically for him, and it's easily the best rap song entrance in WWE history, in my opinion. Now next up, our number six. To me, and for obviously Shawn Michaels, if you couldn't tell, to me, this was a song, probably the corniest song on here, but it fit somehow. Shawn Michaels made that song fit him, fit his character. Even as he went on, it became something more than just the sexy boy, more than just Sherry Martell's boy toy. Um, it was very, I don't, I think. This is a case where the character sold the song more so than the song sold the character. But then again, as soon as you hear that music, you know who it is and you know who's coming out and you know why. One of the great performers of all time, one of the best theme songs of all time, kind of wraps itself all together if you ask me. Now next up, we have our number five. The theme song was made famous by Hulk Hogan, but here's a piece of trivia that a lot of people already know. Originally it was created for the U.S. Express, Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham. They didn't have a long run, Hulk Hogan adopted it, ran with it, made it his theme song. Other people over the years have used it as well, Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe as the Stooges. Again, nothing says WWF in the 80s more than Hulk Hogan. More Than Real American, it's a song that's, again, easily identifiable. You know the character that's coming out, you know why it's being played, you know that the guy in the red and yellow is coming most likely to de destroy the big nasty Andre the Giant, or the nefarious Nikolai Volkov, or get his vengeance on King Kong Bundy, or whatever it may have been, but you knew why and you knew who it was for. Which, again, makes it so iconic. You can play this song anywhere at any time, and this is one of the few wrestling songs you can take outside of the world of wrestling, and people know whose song it is, and know what it's for. Now next up, our number four. In my opinion, Randy Orton's theme song fits him just like a glove. It's unique, the entrance with the strobe lights, with everything. 
the fact that he carries it into the ring and makes it seem like he does hear voices in his head, and everything about it is perfect for him. It, he, it sets the tone, it lets you know who's coming, it lets you know what they're about, what they're going to be doing, you know, basically what a theme song should do. It's one of, it's one of my favorites of the Ruthless Aggression era, one of the better theme songs, I think, for anybody as as noted by how high it is on the list. I absolutely love it. I think it fits Randy Orton perfectly. I think they're, this is meshed so well and gets so, it's such a great combination, the two, the theme song and the character. Now our number three. Now, over the years, Triple H has had many theme songs. First is Connecticut Blue Blood theme, then his DX theme, then the My Time, the Game, the King of Kings. In my opinion, this is the best of his theme songs. This is the one iconic to him. This is the one you think of when you think of him coming to the, the ring with Motorhead playing. Uh, Motorhead obviously did the song synonymous with Triple H. They did a couple of his themes. They did the uh, Evolution theme for him. They did King of Kings. They did this for him. Perfect song for a perfect wrestler. In my opinion, it helped elevate his game and, and make him something totally unique to have such a great song attached to him. And this easily, if you take the song itself, could have been a heavy metal hit. And I believe it was even back in the day when it first came out, that it was a hit, that it did chart on Billboard's um, Heavy Metal and Hard Rock. But it's a great song in my opinion. Perfect fit. Again, another song that fits the character perfectly. My favorite of Triple H's theme songs. And all of his were actually really good, to be honest with you. Now our next one, our number two. To me, a very much an 80s hard rock song, you got, it tells you exactly, here comes Axe, here comes Smash, here comes Demolition. They're bringing pain and disaster with him. Demolition, in my opinion, criminally underrated team. Um, they're given a lot of shit for being a Road Warrior clone, but they were very unique in their own way. A lot of similarities with the face paint the amount of studs and spikes and everything. However, I think they did their own spin with it. You gotta remember, the Road Warriors are a ripoff of the Mad Max movie. So it's not like they're not... They went to the source material as well. There was a character in the movie named Lord Humongous who the, had the black stripe and studded thing as well. So. Are they a Road Warrior ripoff? Maybe, but I think they became something much more. And I think they're criminally underrated. I think they're one of the best tag teams that's ever done it, uh, especially when you talk about just the WWF. I think they laid their, laid their own path, had their own style, and I thought it was they were very good, in my opinion. Now, before we get to the number one, if you haven't seen our top tens before, we do a little thing called the best of the rest. And basically these are songs that just barely miss the list. Now, for time reasons, I'm not going to play a snippet of these, but we all know them for the most part, and we remember and love them. First off, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You knew the song, you knew as soon as the glass breaks, that a badass was coming to the ring, and Austin was coming to hit a stunner, drink some beer, and kick ass. And that's exactly what you got. Next up, Razor Ramon. Such a... You had the car crash noise, the, the music, which kind of is a slowed down version of the Stone Cold theme song. If you listen to them 
They're very similar. Set up his attitude, set up his more, I don't want to say slower style, but more methodical style that uh, Scott Hall portrayed as a Razor Ramon character. It was very good setup, very much fit the character perfectly. Last but not least, in our best of the rest, a song about a team that I just mentioned when talking of Demolition, The Legion of Doom. It starts off with the Haw Hawk saying, oh, what a rush. It goes into their music. Another good song for another great tag team, in my opinion, one of the best of all time. You know, just to me, the reason it didn't make the list is I like Iron Man for them better. The song that they used in Jim Crockett promotions, the uh, Black Sabbath song. This is one of the times where their music from another company hurt them, hurt my liking of their music in this company. Could happen with Hulk Hogan with Voodoo Child as well. I like Voodoo Child when he was part of the NWO. I mean, just. To me, it's the lesser of the two Legion Doom songs, although very iconic in its own right. Now, before we get into our, our final one, our number one here, if you think we left something off the list, if you think we put a song up too high, put a song down too low, left it off altogether, let us know what you think. Put it down in the comments. Make sure while you're there you hit like and share. Get the word out. If you like what we do here, let your friends know so we can get more support, more support. More people watching equals more videos, in my opinion. Because the more, the more I see you like what I'm doing, the more I'm going to put out. With all that being said, we're going to go right into our number one theme song of all time. One that I've had several arguments with all my friends with, but I made this list. So it's my list, and this is my number one. If you didn't know what that was, that was the Honky Tonk Man theme song for the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. In my opinion, there has never been a song that fit a character better than the Honky Tonk Man theme song with the Honky Tonk Man. The fact that he sings his own theme song, something that we've seen earlier in the countdown which, with uh, HBK, adds to it, adds to the fact that he had the somewhat Elvis impersonator gimmick in the very Elvis-style song. I mean, to me, it fit him. It was cocky, it was brash, it was different. It showed who he was, it told you who he was gonna do, what he was about, what he was gonna do with you. And to me, no other song in the history of wrestling, or in the history of WWF, at least, fit a character as much as the Honky Tonk Man's theme song, in my opinion. But, basically that's all we have. That's our top 10 of the best WWF slash WWE theme songs. Let us know what you think. Once again, leave it in the comments. Tell us what you think. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on Twitter. Make sure you hit like and share. And, basically that's all I have on that. My name is George Coles and this has been a Heel Heat Top 10.